Hello everyone, this is Krista. This is my vlog post for May 15th, 2023. This is Dorado. He is a 19 year old warm blood that I've had most of his life. My agenda for this lesson today is to work on a dynamic that we have um, since I, he's a big horse and this is a dynamic that we've had most of our riding career. Uh, we tend, I tend to pull on the reins because he, he tends to shoot out in front of me. Um, I have a hard time keeping up with his motion and then I tend to pull on the reins. So what we're going to be doing, I recently had a lesson with a biomechanics person and we focused on uh, an awareness exercise where I was trying to determine how much of my awareness on um, doing transitions results from my seat and how much awareness results from using the reins. Um, so I'm going to be doing that today mostly I haven't warmed up I'm going to start out at the walk and then I may go into um, higher gates I'll probably do some transitions walk trot walk walk, trot, um, maybe up to trot canter. I'm not sure. <laughs> I might just work on walk trot today. It's hot. Um, the other thing is uh, the biomechanics ex expert noticed that sometimes he does not step under himself with his front legs. He'll step out and we, I was determined with every stride whether he was stepping out or in and how I would fix it where he was stepping un more underneath himself. Um, in the last lesson, we just focused in the front end. Uh, eventually, we'll also focus in the hind end. So I'm gonna be practicing that today. And I will be trying to talk through it a bit. I have my recorder on. And um, we'll just see how the lesson goes. <laughs> Okay, so my first um, awareness exercise that I'm going to be doing today is determine when he's out or in with one or the other front feet um, as far as tracking on a, on a single line and how to fix that. So I'm looking at the, I'm feeling, I have my head up And I'm trying to develop my awareness of which foot is more out, which typically um, is the outside foot, and that's what it feels like to me today. So I'm going to focus on this outside foot, front foot, and try to fix it to be a little bit more aligned under the body. So see my left, trying to fix it with my thigh. So he speeds up a bit. I think I gave him too much aid. So he's in, in. In. And now he feels a little out. In. 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 We're not going to walk right on the rail because horses tend to gravitate toward the rail. In. 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 In, in. I'm looking at the out. I'm <laughs> focused on the outside front leg. In, out, in, 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 in. Okay, so he gets a little speedy here. My aids are too much. In, in. Okay, I'm gonna do a, just a little bit of a half halt here. I'm gonna try it a little bit with my reins. Try to get them a little rounder. I have to focus what percentage of that half halt comes from my hands and what comes from my seat. So that came mostly from my seat. I would say, ugh, I would say maybe 80-20. 80% seat, 20% hands. I'm gonna do another half halt. I'm going to try to stop him with just my seat. So when I stop him, I can't stop him with just my seat. He doesn't respond. 
but I tried to use very little rain. When I stop him, he does go out on the right front foot again a little bit, so I'm going to try to fix that for the next transition. Okay, so I'm using a lot of hand here. I would say, yeah, I'm more, I was more hands than seat, and of course my horse is not straight and he's kind of facing out, but um, yeah, that's probably 40 uh, 40 percent, not even 40 percent, I would say 30 percent seat and, and whatever the difference is in hand, 60, 60, I don't know, now would be 70 <laughs> percent. Okay, he's a little rounder now. Try to stop him with just the seat. So he gets a little braced in the contact. So I did feel, because of the contact there, I would say 50, 50 maybe. So he's, he's a little bit tension with the contact here. I'm going to follow him with my hands. A little bit lighter there. And then I'm going to stop with my seat. And I just stop my hands. So he pulls on the reins. So I would say 60% um, hands, 40% seat. Moving his outside in. He's heavy. <laughs> He's heavy in my hands. I'm going to follow his face a little bit more. This feels better. There is the connection. Feels a little lighter. And then I'll just stop with my seat. Okay, so immediately when I use my seat, I feel I'm not pulling back, but he's heavier in my hands. I would say 60 seat, 40 hands. Okay, a little bit lighter there, maybe. Okay, but he's doing this creep thing a bit. So I would say it was a 65% seat. I'm getting a little running too much <laughs> space in my head trying to figure out the math on the percentages. So I'll just, I'll just focus on the seat percentage. <laughs> so, okay, so that was heavier. I would say 40% seat. <laughs> okay, little lighter. I'm going to say 50-50. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and give him a free walk across the diagonal here. I'll go to F. Try to keep... He feels he's bulging a little bit to the outside again, so I'm going to use my left leg to fix it. Okay, so now he's um, bulging again towards the outside, so we'll try not to stay on the rail. I'm going to do my transition. Um, I would say 45% seat. I'm going to try to pick up the reins and see what happens. So. I picked at the reins and I felt he was a little squirrelier. So I'm going to let him out again. I'm going to try it again. That was less focused on my hands when I picked them up. Try it again. Let him go all the way to the buckle. Pick him up. 
Um, I felt he was bulging through the right shoulder when I picked up the reins. I didn't. I, I was more focused on my reins than my seat when I picked them up. Let's try it again. A little bit less bulging to the inside when I picked up the reins. Now he's bulging to the outside. I gotta fix that. I'm using my outside thigh to fix it. I'm gonna let him go again. Long rein to the buckle. Focus on how I pick them up, how much becomes from my seat. I squeezed my seat. I had more seat than hand in there. I leaned a little bit forward. I'm walking forward. Go pick them up. Oh, a little bit more relaxation in the pole there. He just dropped a little bit. <laughs> Took me that long to get him a little bit more relaxed at the walk here. <laughs> he thinks we're going to do something when I take him out. So I'm going to go ahead and go across the diagonal here. We'll do it to the left. Um, we'll do a free walk. I'm going to do all the way on the back wall. And really let him walk. Maybe a little bit, try to get him, swing the hips a little bit more to get him more underneath himself. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my inside rein a bit. Um, so I didn't get a lot of difference in the rein length. This would not be the rein length I'd need for a regular test. <laughs> Even a training level test, I'd need to be have him a little bit more um, shorter range, so I think I did pretty good at keeping most of my awareness in my seat, even though I shortened the reins. I try not to disrupt the mouth much during that that um, rein shortening. He is bulging out a little bit to the right again, and he tends to bulge out more to the right. Okay, so I'm going to short uh, lengthen the reins back to a. a uh, free walk all the way to the buckle. <laughs> I have to remind myself to keep my thumbs on top. Okay, so that, when I shortened the reins there, I did not use my outside thigh at all and he bolts to the outside with his uh, outside leg, outside front leg. We try it again. Go. Oh, a little bit more relaxation. Oh. Yeah? The one that your bot makes you give the extra hay. Raffi? Um, yeah, I guess. Because he already got a bunch. Okay, yeah, you can give it to Raffi. Okay, let him all the way out to the end of the buckle. Shorten the reins. Keep the inside leg underneath him. He was drifting to the outside with his right front again. Just going to do this for a while. This is a better, actually I wasn't looking down now. <laughs> I think that's the key. I shouldn't look down <laughs> because I picked up the reins. He didn't seem to bulge his shoulders one way or the other. So that's a light bulb moment for me.
Yep. Okay, so I was a little abrupt there, and again, he kind of speeds off, as you can see. This I haven't done anything with him. I haven't even trotted him, so he's pretty relaxed, but um, still, if I, if I get a little bit too exuberant in my rain picking up, he starts trotting off. I leaned forward that time. That's probably not the best. Let me try it again with my seat bones plugged into the, into the seat. Okay, I'm going to let him out. Let me pick him up. Look how relaxed he is now. I mean, because we haven't tried it at all, that's why. <laughs> he was like, okay, we're going to be doing something, and we haven't done anything <laughs> except for this little exercise here. So, okay, I am going to pick him up a little bit more, and we're going to actually start trying a little bit. But let me just pick him up. So now I have him at the walk. I have a shorter rein, and he feels like he's a little bit more into the outside lane. I just did a little bit of flexion with the outside half hand so I could um, get him a little bit more laterally flexed. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trot a little bit and pick him up to the trot. Okay, he's already getting a little bit more into his sympathetic para, in his, into his sympathetic nervous system, or auto, you know, a little bit more stiff in the pole. There we go. So, yeah, this is not working. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna try to do it as relaxed as possible. I think what I'm gonna do is drop this whip because he gets a little excited with the whip. Try to do more of the control. He is a sensitive horse. He probably doesn't need too much whip. He needs more leg, but sometimes he doesn't respond to the leg, leg in, and that's why I carry the whip. Okay. So I have a little bit more connection here. I'm trying to follow his face. He feels like a little bit more like lead in my hands now. And we're going to go trot. So that wasn't the best transition. That was our first transition. Um, and so, a little stiff, because he's 19, guys, and he has heart hock arthritis. But we're going to, um, just trying to, okay, I'm going to do a little counter flex here, oops, <laughs> to get him using his inside leg a little bit better. Okay, so, uh, 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 get the circle. Let me try to get the circle better. A little bit counter flex again. The inside leg. So, so as you can see, it's a little faster. I'm just going to do try a little bit of warm up here. Stretchy trot. Both sides. Okay, he feels like he's stepping. Not stepping really underneath himself with the right leg. I'm going to try to fix it. Okay. And then we'll shorten the reins a bit. Try to keep the awareness in the seat. Seat and legs. <laughs> Okay, so he's kind of bombing off here. So I'm going to stop him. I used a lot of hand there. So what I need to do is use more seat and see how I, now that I've trotted him a bit, he's a little bit more speed-offishy. So we're going to 
go back to our first exercise here where I'm walking I let them go out now watch her. okay so I've trotted now when I pick up the reins well I didn't do too bad but see how he bombs off that's you know that's our dynamic doing that for 16 years so I'm gonna let him go down here Okay, I need to look up and not at his head. <laughs> I think that's part of it. Okay, so as soon as I pick up the reins after I trot it, he goes back to this. So we're just going to do go back to what we had, and we'll try a little trot again and then go back to what we had. So, I don't like that. Hup. I'm going to just stop him. So that stop, had a, I had probably... Probably 75% in my hands. So as I did the trotting, um, now he is more on the forehand and in my hands. So I'm going to go back, walk. Okay, I think that was more... I think that was more seat. I would say that look he's standing out he's leaning out on his right shoulder. I would say that's um, probably 55 seat. Okay. So I'll just stay with some contact here and Okay, that was pretty good. I didn't really have an, a lot on my hands there. I would say 50-50 maybe. All over with my hands. More, more seat, I would say 65-35. And go let him go out a little bit again and we're going to start this one again where I do the the um, free walk on the buckle and then take up the reins and as you can see he was a little bit speedy in the trans or the pickup <laughs> uh, I would say it would be about 55 seat there he wasn't too pulley So he tra he started jigging a bit. Um, I still use probably 55 seat, but he was jiggy. I'm gonna try it again. 55 seat. Uh, kind of just noticed something. I'm kind of using my thighs and popping my sat my butt out of the saddle and becoming a little unplugged when I take up the reins. So, yep. Okay. So I'm going to just um, do a rein back a few steps, try to get his balance a little bit more on the hind end. Okay. And then walk him out. Um, a little bit pulley, 50-50, uh, I think. My more, more, more in the hands, I think. 60, 60% hands. Yeah, same. He's gotten more pulley.
Okay, I'm going to rein him back again. He just feels like he uh, is too heavy in the forehand. Not enough weight in the hind quarters. Feels lighter now. Mm, 60 40 60 40 Let me see if I can go ahead and do the free walk. I'm going to do it on the I'm going to do it on a circle so I have a little bit more uh, hind end underneath me instead of on the long sides and then I will pick them up on the circle. A little easier. Leaned a little bit forward. It's hard to not lean a little bit forward when you're trying to shorten your reins without pulling. So did that. I think this might be a little bit better to do this exercise on the circle because when he gets on the on the rail, he just has oh, he just has a nice long place where his feet are in back of him and he just loses his balance and runs onto the forehand. Um, and starts jigging. Go back. Okay. Okay. Okay, so he's very into my hands now. I want him to stop that. <laughs> I want him to push instead of pull. <gasps> okay, I'm going to go ahead and trot him a little bit on this circle. try to transition to the walk without without pulling on the reins. So I didn't feel like I sat down good enough in that transition. I didn't feel like I was pulling much, so that's a good thing. But now, since I trot him, he's back to, um, you know, being kind of a, a tanker. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop him, reset him. I'm going to back him up again. And then walk forward. And then we're going to try this uh, free walk thing again on the buckle. And when I do canter, it's going to be a real, it's going to be real fun. <laughs> so then I walk him. So, you know, he, as soon as I pick up this thing, he speeds up. I'm going to stop. Okay, and then I'm going to walk him again. Okay, so I picked him up. He didn't jog. He kind of speeded up a little bit, but that's pretty good. It's pretty light in the connection. Okay, and then back down. And then we're going to try it again at the trot. I'll do it a little bit closer to the camera. <laughs> that might be easier. So you can see that he, um, one of his evasion tactics is he sticks his tongue out. And I'm just going to, yeah, he's got it out now. So um, I'm just going to not worry about it. <laughs> it's just one of the things that has happened in our dynamic of the pulling. It's not like I'm putting too much pressure on him. He just automatically does it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. And that's the whole... He's a little heavy in the hands. Let's try to use my seat to slow him down. So I did that. Instead of going to my hands and backing him up, I used my seat. Brownie point for Krista. <laughs> and then we go back down. And then pick them up. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and I'm going to try them. Oh, so I picked them up and I kind of pulled on the reins there. That wasn't really good on my part. I mean, he didn't, he actually wasn't too bad. He didn't speed up. He connected his. Okay. So 
Okay, I'm going to try something really challenging. I'm going to try to canter and see what happens after this. So, half all that the canter is always on the up, where the main goes up, and it's always on the outside rein, never on the inside rein. Do remember that. <laughs> Don't always remember it. Okay, and then I'm going to try them. Okay. So, yeah. On the canter, and now he's really pulling on me. I'm going to stop them. Um, so on the canter, that's where we get into our pulling match. Um, I'm going to go back to the walk again. To stay, I'm going to stay on the circle for both sides and practice my transitions on the circle so the pivo can see. Okay, more on the hand again there. I'm going to let the reins out. Okay, so he's really bulging his left shoulder out. I have to control it with my... Okay, and see how he does this? I haven't even done anything. He just starts trotting off. So I'm going to stop him for a moment. Try to reset. I'm going to actually do a rein back. I don't know if this is... And then I'm going to... Then I'm going to go ahead and walk him. And really use my seat and my core. And then try to really... Keep him carrying himself instead of bombing off. Carry, carry, carry. I have to sit up a little bit. Plug those seat bones in the back. Keep my lower leg underneath. Keep my um, keep a wedge of cheese between my knee, underneath my knee that won't fall off. So my, my legs are behind my my heels are in a line with my seat. Because I tend to get really chair seated with the bomb off problem. Good. And then we can walk them out. We let the reins go. Okay. Anyway. So he's gotten a little bit more balmy. I have a tendency when he's this balmy that I, when I pick up my reins to make my seat, I think it's to make my seat a little bit more plugged into the saddle. I start put my legs forward because then I feel like my seat is more plugged in, but that's an incorrect response. I need my seat plugged in. My pelvis turned up a little bit, but I still need to keep my legs underneath me. Okay, then walk on. Okay, that was pretty good. I think I had like at least 75% in my seat with that transition to a pulp. And that one too, that's good. Okay, we're gonna try something a little bit more challenging. Back to the trot. And then I'm transition. Okay, so I'm looking down. It's probably not the best thing to be doing going to put him like a freight train on his forehand. Okay, and then we're going to... Oh, okay, so the transition, the transition is bad. Let me, let me go ahead. And, so I had to shorten my brains. He feels very into my hands right now. Probably 60% at least, or 70 even maybe. I'm going to go back to sitting trot. Half up. Half up. And then I'm going to try to walk him. Do a walk transition. Which I use more hands there. So, it's like the, when I go back to the transition, it's, it's not very good. It's, it's mostly in my hand. The walk to the halt. I just squeezed my legs. I was hoping that that would um, make him halt, but he's got a lot of weight in his forehand. I'm going to back him up to reset his balance a little bit. To, I don't want his head down though. Yeah, I want to reset his balance to hindquarters a little bit. 
I probably am looking down and that's probably why it's worse. Um, that's a bad habit of mine. I want to keep my seat bones plugged in to the saddle. Okay, I'm going to just try a little bit of sitting trot instead of the posting trot. It might be easier just because I can keep my seat bones plugged in a little bit better. So, with the transitions anyway, not, sitting trot is not that easy. And then I'm going to, <clears throat> I think that's better as far as the transition went. Okay. So it feels a little balmy. So I'm going to go ahead and try this exercise again. That's good. Bomb off all the way. Yep. Again, he's got all his weight in the front end. Back him up. And then walk him forward, and then down. Okay, this is not a very symmetrical circle at all. <laughs> Trying to keep the inside. So he's falling out on the left shoulder now, which is why this circle has gotten really big and ovalish. Oops. Okay, try that again. Okay, so as you can see, just like to speed off, especially after I've done a couple of things at a higher um, pace. That was better. So I'm just going to work on this a little bit. I mean, I can try it again at the canter. That was pretty good. All right, we're working on it. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Yeah, now he's coming off again. He's got his face behind the vertical. Up. Okay. Yeah, see. Alrighty. Now. Back, sit back, sit back. Okay, so he's at a trot. Ugh. There's a lot of weight in the hands there. Walk. Okay, I'm not going to stop him. I would say 60% hands. Stop on. Okay, that was nice and light. I'd say 80% seat. That's good. Okay, yep. Then he's kind of speeding up, waiting for the next transition, which I haven't got. I'm going to reset him with a rain block. No, not on the forehand. Okay, and I'm gonna... Okay, so this is better. I'm gonna canter him. Let's see if we can get him. I think that's better. That was better. That transition from the canter to the walk was better. There was like a few trot steps but I wasn't really, really pulling that hard. A little bit, you know, because that one is a challenge. But I would say at least 65% was on my seat, which I think is pretty good from a canter to a walk transition. So we're gonna try the same thing on this side. Okay, I'm gonna do sitting trot on this side. Whoop. Again, no bombing off, no bombing off. Back him up. Okay. 
for a uh, walk. We're just gonna walk. Walk. He's already ready. So I'm gonna just do the walk again. We go to the buckle, and then I go up again. As you can see, he walks faster. And I'm gonna try to use a little bit more core. I could use a little hand there, but a little bit more core. I might cut that chin strip off, it's kind of annoying. Okay, so as soon as I did that, I didn't really use any seed or anything to slow his motion when I tried the transition, so he just bombs off like normal. <laughs> Hope. Okay, so we're going to try that again. This time I'm going to try a little bit more seat when I pick up the reins and retard my seat a little bit more so he doesn't bomb off. So that was pretty good. Um, he's bulging to the right. He felt like he had probably at least 65 in the seat. So again, okay, so now I'm going to see now as soon as I think I'm going to start trotting. He gets really strong in the rain, so I'm going to try trotting, and I'm going to try to sit and trot because it's easier when I'm in this position for me to keep my seat bones plugged in. Okay, so you got really strong. But I really try to use my seat and not my hands. I kept them in the same place and there was more tension on the reins. So that probably 65% in the reins. And again, he's bombing off a little bit. So we're gonna, I'm gonna just kind of flex him a bit. Try again. Whoop. Counter flex, keep this shoulder in. Try it again. It was a little heavier on the side. This is the side he has arthritis on in the hind foot, so might be waiting the front 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 end more. And then I'm gonna s I didn't totally keep my seat bones plugged in on that. I'm gonna try posting trot and the transition and then I'll go a little bit of the canner. Okay, so this thing do kind of a stretchy trot. And then I'm gonna to try to bring it back. A bit short in the reins. Like in. So he was very heavy in the hand, but I really tried to use my seat as well. So I'm going to say 45% seat there. I'm going to try it again. Post and try. Oops. Try the chances again. It's kind of like he just bombed off and I got left in the... Here, let me reset him. Try to reset him. Err! What the hell? Bring back. Okay. Okay, keep light, buddy. Here we go. Time comes out again. Okay, I'm not gonna. I don't care about it. Just gonna keep trying them around. Use my seat. Oops. Keep going. It wasn't the best. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sit a few strides so I can really plug my seat in. And then I'm gonna stop with my core. And I thought that was pretty good. I didn't use my hands much. I was really focused on my core, probably 70%. I mean, he's starting to feel really balmy, but okay, so we're going to try a real challenge, even though he's a little balmy. I'm going to cantering. Okay. This canter actually feels really good. This canter is actually kind of fun to ride. Got a nice canner. Half up when the rain is up. The outside rain. 
and down we go. Okay, so he really gets on the forehand and the transition down. And I would say 85 in my hands. So we're gonna try that transition again. I'm gonna back him up a little bit. Um, okay, then we try it again. I'm gonna sit up. Okay, and that wasn't the best transition. Oh, half full. Okay, and that's better. Okay, up. Up, 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 up. Okay, that was a better transition down, even though I, he pulled me a little bit out of the saddle. Um, I think it was better. Let me try it a little bit again. Enter. I'm going to try it. Hold on the inside ring. Hold on the inside ring. Okay. Sometimes I have to hold his head up so he doesn't, like, really push it down. Okay. Half up, I'm gonna bend him a little bit. More bend. More bend. More bend. More bend. More bend and go. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I think I'm gonna quit with that. <laughs> okay, just walk him a little bit, and then I'm gonna here. Let me try this buckle thing again for a moment, and then I'm gonna try a stretchy trot. Okay, so as you can see, after the canter, I have to work. You know, anytime I pick up the reins, or even just let him go, he just starts running off. So, which I don't want. I mean, I can't even hold him on the buckle without him running off. So this is, uh, see, he could do this at the beginning of our ride before we canter, but then he comes back. We're not going to do any more canter. We're just going to focus on this exercise. Okay. Okay, so there he goes bombing off. So we're just we're going to be patient here and just nope <laughs> no no it can be frustrating <laughs> it's frustrating I know no we don't trot off I didn't ask you to trot my legs are not even on your sides so don't trot off <laughs> so okay we walk him back. Maybe next time I won't wear spurs. Okay, so and then I'm gonna... Okay, so he thinks I'm gonna rein back him. No. Just, okay, let me... Instead of going all the way to the buckle, I'm gonna just do kind of a um, medium walk to halts with a little bit of connection here. I think that's a little bit more in our repertoire right now. He's very heavy in the hand. I would say 65% at least. Um, the seat is not having as much control. So I'm just taking him back. I've done a lot of work with him. I've shown him up to third, third level, but we had a lot of holes in our training because of this. We couldn't get him to move off the seat. He moves off my hand and um, it got us into a lot of trouble when we were competing because we didn't really have the basics we had <laughs> we had the movements but not the basics and that you need the ba basics in order to progress uh, past a certain point otherwise you just hit a plateau okay okay good boy so we'll just do this again, and then maybe I can go back to the buckle thing. Okay, still a little bit more in the hand. That was pretty good. I think that was like 85% seat, which is pretty good considering we just did all this canter work. Now as soon as I shorten the reins, of course, he kind of bombs off. 
I'm going to try to see if I can go back down to a free walk on the long grain. Well, this, I'm just going to let, let him walk like this for a while uh, before I try the transition. Kind of reset his brain a little bit. He a lot of patience. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit better here. I picked him up. He didn't bum off. Which is good. Okay, I'm going to just end the session. I'm going to do a little bit of stretchy trot on both sides. Um, might have to reestablish this uh, walk aid thing. I'm just testing to see how much hand I have to have. So I'm going to do a, a little bit of stretchy trot because normally um, my instructors encourage me to do stretchy trot before I end the session. So we'll just do that. Okay, so I'm going to let him stretch down both sides. We'll do figure eight. He does tend to get a little speedy on the right side, so I might have to correct that a little bit. Because it's actually pretty good. Oh, now I've gotten speed. So I'm going to stop him. Once I start feeling that he's getting a little rushy, I'm going to stop him and then try it again. Just a few. few circles. Oops! Not paying attention. I was about ready to drift right outside of the arena on the left terrain. Okay, so a few... He's not bending enough. <laughs> not bending enough. And now he's getting rushy again. So this... <laughs> this is the thing. It's like this horse. Okay, so... Yep. Okay, we're going to try it on this side again. And then... He starts getting rushy again. He's doing pretty good on this side. He's slower. And then... Ba -ba -da -da, toe mode! But I'm going to try not to be toe mode. There. I know he's sticking his tongue out, but um, he's still pretty light in my hands. Now he's getting on this right shoulder, which is... And then when I use my leg... Or I just use my thigh, my inside thigh, and he starts speeding up. But... Okay, so yeah, he's on the forehand. I gotta sit, like, keep my head up. <laughs> I think of more of my weight's on his forehand, which I'm gonna keep him on the forehand. Okay, now I'm gonna stop. Ugh. This right side is bad. <laughs> so he, you know... Okay, so I'm going to have to shorten my rein so that my hands don't go past my, past his hands. And then stop. So that was a lot on the right rein. That was a lot of hand. I would say 90% hand there. Because he was bombing off. Can't have the bomb off. And now he's kind of pushing out. But, okay, let me try this again. Um... I'm going to just try a stretchy trot to the right because that one is what is most difficult for us. And then once I get the stretchy trot to the right, I'm going to try to go back to my walk, halt transitions on the right side, and then I'm going to go back to my um, uh, free walk, walk transitions see if I can do that. So I'm going to do a little bit of stretchy trot. Not a lot. He's still pretty balanced. I'm going to bring him back. Try, um, what I need to do is I have to... Okay, so stretchy trot. You give him rain. Pick up the reins. Half halt strong on the outside. So yeah, I'm using more. Half halt. Half halt. Then I'm going to bring him back to the walk. And then I'm going to try to stop with my core. So that was better. So I brought him back to the trot. It took a lot to bring him back to the trot, to the regular trot, to the walk. I had to go from stretchy trot to trot. 
and then from trot to walk and I probably had at that point I probably had like 85 to 90 percent in my hands then I am going from medium walk to halt and now I'm going I would say I was about 50 percent in my seat again It's really hard to break these bad habits, both for me and for my horse. Okay, and there, that's better. Um, 65 in my seat. Okay, so he starts waiting the forehand. But I'm not pulling. I would say maybe 65 in my seat. Okay, so I'm really going to use my thigh. That was good. I would say that was probably 70% in my seat. So that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and try this. Getting him on a long rein. Out of free walk. Um, he doesn't have any contact now. Um, and then I'm going to pick the reins up He's a little bit fast. I'm going to try to retard him a bit with my seat. Okay, that wasn't too bad considering that was the first of that type of work we did after the canter on the side. Or not the canter, that, he, yeah, that bomb off stretchy trot, which is not working too well. Okay, we're going to try it again. This is better. Oh, yes. Okay, so that was pretty good. I'm going to quit with that. Oh, you guys are over there. <laughs> Anyways, so as you can see, that was um, the lesson. I don't know if I followed my agenda. Um, I didn't get to the laterals at all. Uh, I did a lot of headspace devoted to the... Um, how much headspace was devoted to my seat and how much to my um, reins or my hands. That was the main uh, gist of this lesson. And then we also did a little bit on the um, trying to figure out where his legs are underneath him. So thank you for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, ring the bell. Oh, <laughs> subscribe, <laughs> give me a thumbs up. Ring the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. I also have another channel that I do um, animated versions of the dressage test. I don't post frequently on that video because it really takes me a long time to <laughs> put together the um, test videos, but you can do that. That's equestrian test and pattern. So subscribe to that one. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you the next time. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs>